What's up, you tube? It is Sunday, October 14, 2018. Y'all know what time it is. It is time for the weekly lawn and garden show. This is the last show before the event known as the Green Industry Expo. For those of you that don't know, this is my third year going to the Green Industry Expo, and I am fired up about it. This is the first time that I have been on this side of the GIE. Usually I go as an applicator, and this time you will be able to find me there hanging out, promoting what we're doing with Carbon Earth Company. If you don't know what we're doing with Carbon Earth Company, we have manufactured a slow-release nutrient technology. Our basis is carbon storage, carbon delivery. If you want to learn a little bit more about what we have going on at the GIE, I'm throwing a link in the chat. Check it out. Just hop on over there. Say, hey, leave a message. Hop on over to the website. Also, I'm going to throw a link into the chat for a little more information on where to find us at the GIE. If you've never been, it's massive. But I will be at booth 10201, the Green County Fertilizer booth. Come see me. Come say, hey, come throw some shade at me. Whatever it is you got to do, get out there and do it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. All right, everybody. We know what time it is. Let me get everything set up over here on my end. I'm, I'm typing like a madman. I look like a crazy person. Let me pause this here so you don't have to hear myself talk over my own speakers. I'm going to continue to delay this just a little while longer and fill up some time space in the time space continuum. We all know how that goes because it is roll call. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me hop on over here to the chat and see what's going on. We got a little love going prior to it. Though, Alan, his ain't sneaking in. He'll be asleep in 15 minutes. I don't want to hear it, Alan. Get your ass awake. We got a lawn and guard to show to do. How many people would like to see Alan do the Lawn and Garden Show with me? Raise your hand. In the chat, raise your hand if you want to see Alan Hain do a YouTube live on the Grass Factor. We got old Fleets, formerly Fleets, now Eric Vaughn, Weddle, Weedell, Waddle, I don't know. Terry Finch is satisfying his itch after he hashtag enjoyed the mo. Lambert, how are you? Good, sir. Glad to see you back. Glenn Stevens, tired in the permagreen, you got is interesting. Uh, did you buy a used one, Glenn? I cannot remember. If you need some help, you holler at me. Start throwing some questions in the chat, and I'll start fielding them. John Pinkerton, for those of you who don't know, way up there in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, on the other side of the United States or the world, however you want to look at it. He's up there running the business with his lovely wife. They, like to play games with me on Snapchat because I'm not old enough to figure it out. And that one cupcake place, if you haven't, check it out. They're doing awesome things. And hands down, the best cupcakes in all of America. And I, I will go on record saying that. And listen, you're talking about a guy who is six foot four, 250 pounds of sweets eating machine here. And I'm telling you, they are the best. In the nation, all I'm going to say, it takes a big boy to be a guy my size to be satisfied. So I'm telling you right now, it's satisfaction in a cupcake sized morsel of delight. Colonel Core, what's going on, man? What is going on? Floyd Everson, how are you? Good, sir. Good to see your name in here. Boom. What's up? What's up, Ronald Paris? 15 hours driving home? Man, that's a long one, buddy. That's a long one. Troy, work, work, working it, Wertner. Troy, that's your new nickname, working it, Wertner. How about them? 
<laughs> I like it. Scott Reich, how are you, good sir? Lush Lawns, how are you, sir? Racing that permagreen. Race that permagreen and watch the Patriot. Ah! Bird age. Hey, that was, that was pretty fun watching you uh, scoot around on that permagreen. Uh, Alan is over there. Take carbon to prevent hangovers. You know, uh, interestingly, activated carbon, you could do that. Is it absorb at all? Adsorb. Uh, John Teague, his Bermuda's waiting for that next year. Going to be his soul for, ooh, boy, Willie Lombos. How are you, good sir? How are you? Shane Brady, dude, getting snow in your area already? I couldn't believe that picture, man. Ah. Larry Newman, what rate of RGS would I recommend on a newly overseeded fescue lawn? I would recommend the three-ounce rate, one gallon to the acre. Jim Beveridge, Jim and Judy up there, way up in Avon, Ohio, up there near the, the big Superior Lakes and the Great Lakes and all that crazy, the lake effect and all that fun stuff they deal with. Man, get to see y'all this coming week. I'm super excited about it. Juan Jarqua. How are you, good sir? How are you? Frank White, man, I'm doing great. How are you? Patrick Keegan, Verena, North Carolina. I don't know how to say that first one, and I, it may turn out to be a bad word if I say it, so I'm going to hold off on there. Uh, Josua Archives. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Uh, did you go to the Coast Guard Barber? No, I did not. Well, it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? My wife cut my hair, and, you know, she uh, – she went to school over near the Yokosuka Navy base, so I think I think she she likes that that high and tight on me, so to speak. But Alan, we're gonna go get our beards did, right? That's right, that's right. Just want to make sure. Look at everybody raising their hand for it. They want to see it, Alan. You're gonna have to get on here and do a live one with me. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Go balls, Gary Evans. Go balls. Yes, sir. I needed that. Your three old wheat grass is dying in places. Brown fungus. Is it too early for a zoxytrobin or propaganazole? Well. Here's the thing, Gary. If you've got disease setting in now, no, it's not too early for it. In fact, it's a little late for it, so hurry up and get it down. So if, you're, if your three-week-old grass is dying, it's important to understand exactly why it's dying. I do know up there in Virginia, they were dealing really badly with gray leaf spot and fescue, which isn't very common. So I'll give you a little history into the propagation and development of fescue seeds. What they usually do is that they will uh, work more towards pythium resistance, leaving it open towards gray leaf spot, or they will target more gray leaf spot resistance, opening it up for pythium. You can't really have your cake and eat it too with fescue. So that's kind of the deal there. Uh, so if you are dealing and it is disease related, yes, absolutely. Get your fungicide down. Now, the other thing, it could be it could be lingering in stars of army worms, cut worms, sod web worms, whichever one you had. It seemed like we all had them all this year. So it could be insecticide related. Do your homework. Do your DD. Make sure you understand exactly what's causing it and then treat appropriately. How about them apples? How's my golf game, Lambert? You know, I used to be decent at golf in my younger years, and then I got married, and then I had kids. So. Uh, I still swing a club from now to, from time to time, but uh, I haven't played in a really long time. Barry Cavanaugh, how are you, good sir? Way down there in Texas. What are some alternatives to mechanical aeration? Um, it depends on what exactly you're looking to do with your mechanical aeration. Are you going after alleviation of uh, compaction? Are you going after alleviation of organic material buildup? Are you looking to top dress? Um, what exactly are you looking to get out of your mechanical aeration? That's kind of a blanket statement um, because my answer would differ on all of those. Uh, so Arcade Nation, Arcade, Arcade Nation USA, tell me what you're looking to get done. And I'll tell you how, what I would recommend as far as an alternative. Should I wait till spring to put down my sulfur dust or get it down immediately? Go big, orange field, angle, moving shrub. What I'm talking about is November 1st too soon for ammonium sulfate. No, sir, Casey, get it down. Beautiful from Anchorage, Alaska. I wish I could say the same about Knoxville. It said, well, it is. Knoxville's Knoxville. Charge more for the endorsements, Matt. <laughs> I need some good shrimp and grits from the low country. That's what I'm talking about. Matt, did you use mechanical air rate this year or did John talk you out of it? 
Michael, we mechanical air rate this year, uh, this year, and you know, we'll always mechanical air rate. And it's not, it's it's more of a function of um I don't control water on all my properties. I deal typically with lots and lots of hills. So they'll go in, aerate, seed, uh, it, especially in hill type situations. I feel like it's going to give me a little better advantage on protecting the seed when you're talking about a 15 degree slope. So that's one of the main reasons I do it. The other thing, too, is that culturally, typically that's how it's done around here. So I could. Could I make the argument? Could I send out the emails and say, hey, listen, you know, we're going to be uh, liquid aerating this year. And would it be OK? Yeah, it'd probably be OK. Um, given the, the time constraints I had this year, it probably wasn't going to be a reality. So I'm not going to make any changes on that front. We're going to continue to aerate. But what we did start doing is running air eight in the spring. And uh, had really good results with it. In fact, I, I like that KOH potassium bump right there before we start getting into the, the heat. You know what I'm saying? Hell yes, Cedar Rapids. That's what I'm talking about. Troy, whoop, whoop, whoop. Troy Wartner up there in Cedar Rapids. Y'all need to meet each other. <laughs> Troy and Whoop working it. <laughs> I hope no one was affected by the hurricane. I can't say I've seen anybody mention being from the Mexico Beach area, but my goodness. That place was absolutely destroyed. So, yeah, my man, Russell Skipper, sticking on in the backside there. How are you good, sir? Can't wait to see you at the GIE either. It's been a minute. I hadn't seen you since June, since we went down there and had us a big old steak down in Georgia. Should I worry about crabgrass this time of year or wait for the first frost? Eli, I would wait for the first frost. There's not really any point in, in worrying about crabgrass. I know. You're in Nashville. You're going through the same cooling trend that I am. Um, so uh, I just, I, you know, as, as, as cool as it's getting, as quick as it is, man, I just let it go. Craig Kaufman, is granular humic better than liquid humic? It depends. It's a, it's a blanket statement. Um, there, there's not an easy answer for that. Typically, liquid humic humics are going to be more of real old dad. Damn it, Mike, what are you doing? What are you doing? Mike over here getting crazy in the chat. Watch this. Watch this real, real old dad. I got something for you coming up here just shortly. Just shortly. Um, so liquid, liquid humic is typically going to be more efficient because you have two modes of uptake. So you have a foliar portion that can deliver your uh, fulvic acids um, to be taken up foliarly. You can use your humic acid to carry your micronutrients to be delivered foliarly. Um, you do not get that out of a granular humic acid app. So you're only relying on root uptake, whereas with foliar, you get both a foliar uptake and a root uptake. So thing when you have a granular humic acid, the way they develop that is they put it into a liquid first and then dehydrate all the water out of it. And so what you're left with is, you know, a you know, dehydrated humic acid. So if you want to apply it foliarly, then you have to reconstitute it back in the solution. But you usually don't have the control to manipulate the pH to get it to go back into solution as well as it previously was. So at that point, it becomes a suspension versus a solution. So it's a it just it's not comparing apples to oranges, a granular to a liquid humic acid. I hope that answers your question. That's my GIE allowance. Hey, let me get over, let me get over here. Let me get up here. Uh Barry, Barry Camarillo, my man. Glad to see you. Two days up. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Come on up and we'll we'll hang out and have us a good long conversation again. Beer trim Tuesday. We'll All right, shoot me a text. I rented my yard 15 days ago with turf type tall fescue. We're possibly expecting some frost this week. Should I have worried about my new seedlings? Old temp is currently 62 degrees. No, sir, Scott Wright, you are good to go, sir. Let the let the frost get on there and do whatever it's going to do. Don't be scared. John Murney, Ontario Kennedy. Tenacity work. Bent grass is now white. Good, John. Not to say it won't come back next year, but try as hard as you can. Uh, you, I mean, you may have to repeat that application. How about that? 
Uh, let's see. Catfire Feeder, how's it going down there in Mississippi? Tell me about it. GG Turf, will high FOSS tie up availability of other nutrients as far as root take up? Uh, can that be bypassed by apl uh, applying foliar wrap? Seems high FOSS has stunted growth on turf. Yeah, GG, so that's exactly what happens. Phosphorus has the ability to bind with lots of things. Um, you know, things like carbonates, like calcium carbonate. It will, it will bond to it and put it into a state where it cannot be taken up. Yes, that can be bypassed by applying a foliar wrap. Um, the hard thing, though, is that typically when the most FOSS is going to be used, it's, it's going to happen in really one major area of turf grass, and that's going to be that establishment from seed as it's pushing that root down. Now, what happens when it's pushing that root down and taking up that FOSS is that typically you don't really have a whole lot of foliage. And then once you start to have foliage, the carbohydrate portion from photosynthesis begins to replace the development of the roots. You still have limited FOSS uptake, but not like you would when you're establishing from seed. So you're kind of at a conundrum there. Ideally, you would want to apply your FOSS prior to your seeding or at the time of your seeding, worst case scenario. Trying to do it foliarly after the fact is, you know, you're kind of um, – you're kind of running in the wind at that point. It's it 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 will help you, but you're not going to get your bang for your buck for it if that helps. Uh, you have a big on your camera. Yeah, what? I thought it was a fly on my screen. No, I think you're looking at a. Uh, that's a that's a that's a screw right there. How about that. Doing well. Patriots and Sox are both winning. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about the Patriots. Nothing against them, but I'm not going to say anything. Uh, it snowed here in Nebraska, so the season might be over for us. Uh, Huskers, I think it, what, it's supposed to be, get up to 74, y'all. I doubt it's over yet, man. I think I think y'all still got a little more to irk out there. Should I apply just potash before grass goes dormant? Uh, Nicole, I assume you're talking about a warm season grass. Uh, you can. So, you know, what 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 you're doing when you're applying potassium there is that, you know, you're doing you're doing a a, a fertilization, so you're applying a, a nutrient, right? Well, a mineral, um, and you're applying something that's not nitrogen. What you don't want to be applying right now is nitrogen if the grass is about to go dormant. Um, applying potassium has shown to increase the plant's defenses against some diseases that cools, uh, that warm season grasses face, such as, uh, no, well, winter kill for one, and then the other one being, ah, Lee, Russell Skipper is where I need your help. What is it for Bermuda grass? Spring dead spot. Spring dead spot. Fall high potash, well, fall potash applications have shown a reduction in spring dead spot. It's not the end all be all, but it has shown a reduction in it. So there is an advantage to applying that in the fall. Uh, real quick, we're coming up at the 20 minute mark. I'm gonna stop in for a commercial real quick and say, everybody, check out what is going on over at Real Low Dad's YouTube channel. Get on over there, say hey to him, and tell him, tell him how much you appreciate everything he does out there in the world. You know what I'm saying? Just get out there and show Real Low Dad some love, man. Some love. Had a yard full of goose grass. Did a full renovate with turf type tall fescue and tenacity. I'm seeing what looks like goose grass popping back up. Will winter take care of it till I pre emerge in the spring? Yes, Greg. Yes, it will. Um, tur uh, goose grass will not survive a frost. Let's see. Let's see. No, no, I hadn't seen you on the PL PLCA there, Casey Turner. I hadn't seen you. Mean Green, how's it going, sir? Good to see you. Fat Chance says, how often should you use a product like Humic 12? Fat Chance, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. If you're just going for a general maintenance application for your soil, maybe it's something you want to apply to maybe four times a year. If you're using it as a chelator in conjunction with your micronutrients, you can apply it at a varying rate depending on your concentration of micronutrients. So it depends. If you're using it to deliver nutrients, then you can adjust your rate, probably drop it and apply it more frequently. If you're using Humic 12 to build um, 
you know, soil or, or organic matter in the soil, then you probably want to back down the frequency, but up your rates a little bit. So I ho hope that helps. There's not really a tried and true answer to that. Do you know of any post-emergent herbicides to control poa annua in overseeded Bermuda grass? Um, Dustin, you are going to be left with probably ethofumisate. Um, I think ethofumisate is tolerant on perennial ryegrass. Check the label before you do it. I don't know that for sure. Check the label on it. But I think that's what you have. Poa constrictor, prograss, ethofumisate, it's all the same thing. Uh, when are the Mo Around the World shirts being shipped? I don't know, Michael Wassenauer. I got mine early before the, the thing started, so um, I do not know, but it should be soon. Um, I would hop on over to the Lawn Guardians uh, channel and uh, shoot, shoot him a message, see what he has to say on that. Real Merit 21.4% AI is 350 per gallon. And the generic imidacloprid is 21.4% and $50 per gallon. Are these basically the same thing? Why the price difference? Lambert, yes, they are the same thing. What is the price difference? One is the original labeled brand name Merit. The other is a generic. That's the difference. It's the same thing. I, I equate it to the pharmaceutical industry. If you go in and you buy, you know, whatever. I, I have I have no idea. I know so so little about pharmaceuticals. I can give you an example though. Uh, albuterol. My wife has to use Pro Air. She ha she has asthma. There's no generic generic for it, and it's always like 110 bucks. So I got to looking around the world for generic albuterol, and it is significantly cheaper everywhere else in the world, but the U.S. because. The new delivery system without the VOCs in it and your little inhaler thing um, has been patented by the company that makes ProAir. So the only difference in it usually is price. Maybe slight differences in the carrier, but typically price. Uh, I, ah, yeah, there you are. You're on the right on Spire Sprayers page. There you go. What do you think about using isoxapin or trifluralin? Pre-emergence in lawns and ornamental, be ornamental beds to control bindweed. I think you will be fine doing that. Um, bindweed, I, I, I really like a soxibin. I really do. In fact, I like it a lot in uh, uh, just in, in lawns in general, tall fescue. Um, I think you will be fine with that. But it's you know it's it's morning glory. Uh, just make sure it's truly killed and that you don't have these lingering tubers underground, and that's what's causing it to come up. Because if that's the case, you just have an immense root system hanging out under there. Typically, that is what's greening up every year. So pre-emergent won't aid in that regard. Have to make sure it's completely killed out before you can prevent it. Looking for a grass factor sticker. I have my wife hop on that. Uh, this year, I put down more herbicide this year. But staying within label rates, Py Pylex, Triclopyr, 2,4-D is example. Also added a fungicide program. Um, why, Willie? Why are you having to throw it down? Typically, if you're having to use that much herbicide, and there's a couple things going on. One, you lack turf density. It's a new property. You hadn't had a chance to aerate and seed it. You know, I can see it. So sometimes that happens. The other thing is that you just have a really crap year as far as things that happen environmentally. You know, high heat, low heat, the thinning of the turf, disease. Then all of a sudden, you know, you get tons and tons of rain. And then, all you know, weeds are all over the place. So I get it, man. I get it. This year was kind of a bad one. Uh, man, I need an aerator. Do you have any old push ones for sale? No, sir. I do not, Mike. Um, my new grass seeds did not germinate as good. Could all of my chemical applications affect my results? Uh, yes. They could. It depends on when was your last chemical application and what was the rate. If you share that with me, I can kind of let you know what's going on. What is the best way to level out a calcium to magnesium level on a CEC 84.8 to 8.8? .8? Okay, so actually, I think what you're looking at there is probably your base saturation level. So when you're dealing with base saturation percentages, the other thing is just to apply the other one. So if you're dealing with high calcium levels and you want to get your magnesium levels up, 
uh, apply something like Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate. Um, I, I love some triple rainbow. Anybody that knows me knows I love, I'm sorry, super rainbow. Super rainbow is an awesome granular fertilizer. It's homogenized and it's got a lot of magnesium sulfate in it. Magnesium sulfate is good to get those magnesium levels up. Uh, and that will bring you back closer. Um, but what's more important, Brian, is look at your actual magnesium levels in the soil. See, are they in the normal range? Uh, you know, I do not like base percent saturation. Um, it was a theory that came out in the 40s and 50s. Some farmers still go by it. Typically, most now don't. They just stick to your actual soil levels. Most soil tests report it because at one time it was extremely popular where you had, had to have the appropriate, what is it, eight to one uh, cow to mag ratio or whatever, or seven to one, whatever it was. And um, turns out uh, Pace Turf, I believe, was the one who did the studies testing base saturation levels and found out that uh, it actually has zero impact on turf performance. What's more important are your actual viable calcium and magnesium levels in the soil. Uh, steak shake. I spray sedge hammer several times and it kills what sedges are up, but then several weeks later, more sprout. Is there a pre emergent that controls sedges, Bermuda, in South Louisiana? Steak and shake. This is where I love dismiss. So, what you can do um, is you can do a 12 ounce per acre sequential application app, uh, apps of sulfentrazone. So, what I mean by that is you run four ounces to the acre, a month later, four ounces to the acre, a month later, four ounces to the acre. Start in May or before the sedges really become a thing, uh, maybe even late April or mid-April. So you do your first app on April 15th, four ounces to the acre of sedges. May 15th, four ounces to the acre of sulfentrazone, sulfentrazone. And then June 15th, four ounces to the acre of sulfentrazone. That 12 ounces to the acre actually has a quote-unquote pre-emergent effect on um, your sedge tubers in the ground. It will actually do a fair amount of damage to the tubers and the existing nutlets that, um, that exist there. So that is going to be your best act. Or you could get into some products like Monument. Um, Monument is a really good product for, it's a sulfonylurea. It has a quote-unquote residual effect on sedges. I love Monument. That is my favorite. No game cocks. Hey, man. 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 Y'all don't need to let me down against te Texas a and ever again. I, I wanted you to win that. I wanted you to win that, Terry, for one of my good buddies over there right now. I got lots of good friends in South Carolina, but, man, I feel for it. My my buddies over at MPK Turf. Oh, oh. I know it made me sick to my stomach. So did the Arkansas game. My my Razorback buddies, what, what were y'all thinking? My goodness. Winter weeds poking up the thin spots. I hear you, cat bird feeder. Get ready because the winter is upon us. It's almost here. There it is. Let's see if you can top Paul's prime, prime cuts boost. Yeah, I'll perform the long care nut by <laughs> That's right. Hi on over to Paul's Prime Cuts YouTube channel. Check out show some love. You know what I'm saying? I heard problems. He is. He's a great guy in long stripes. He is a great guy. Hashtag Viper in the Discord. Mo shirt ship once fundraiser is over. There we go. Matt Powell, what's going on, man? Yo, my man, are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am. Uh, okay, I live in Gretna. I don't know where that is. Can you explain the reason why there are warnings about using soil acidifiers after applying products like Humic 12? Uh, can you send me? Uh, a label that states that uh, chances are the reason being is that something that is a soil acidifier can cause something like the humic acids in 12 in, in a product like humic 12 um, are can cause it to come out of solution so this is how that happens humic acid is soluble in a high ph in a basic solution you can drop that pH reasonably closer to neutral. As you start attempting to go to acidic, you will cause that humic 12 to go from being in solution and to fall out really quickly. So 
that's what I but send me a label on that exactly so I can uh I can I can dive into that a little more and, and see exactly where that's being stated. Because I'm not sure I've ever seen a warning that says anything about using the soil acidifier after applying a product like Humic 12. What can you use to get rid of chamber bitter? Triclopyr, uh, fluoroxapyr, a combination product like 2,4-D, triclopyr, and fluoroxapyr, like Momentum FX2, Escalade 2, uh, something like Q4. Um, all of that will take care of it. 2,4-D ester will take care of it. Small clover-like weed with yellow flower. ID, remedy. You're talking about oxalis, also known as yellow wood sorrel. Again, you're looking for a product like Momentum FX2, something with triclopyr and or fluoroxapyr. We'll do a good job. 2,4-D ester will get it also. Uh, I love the <laughs> uh, I ever deal with crawfish in a lawn. What did you do? COVID. Man, there is not a whole lot you could do about it. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. I get them in my backyard all the time because it's in a low-lying area. Unfortunately, what you would have to do is cause your back or cause the lawn to drain faster. Get the water out of there. Don't let it sit in there. But unfortunately, sometimes it's just the lay of the land. And typically, if you're dealing with crawfish in a lawn, it's not because water isn't moving out fast enough. It's because your water table in your soil is too high. And in that case, nothing you can do, buddy. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Overseed on September 8th. Would I be able to apply pre-emergent this year? Or would it even be beneficial in Illinois to do so? Who's your boo? If you had, I would say where you are in northern Illinois right now, if you've not applied a pre-emergent, you're not going to see a whole lot of advantage by doing so. I would probably handle everything post-emergently from this point forward. Right, for instance, is there a certain soil temp that is key for putting down winterizer fert? I'm in middle Tennessee and getting cool temp now, but temps could go back up this crazy Tennessee weather any time for the next month or so. Greg, no, there's not a certain soil temperature, but what I like to do is do one at the time of seeding, 30 to 45 days, do another, and then another 30 to 45 days when you're definitely out of the growing range of, of tall fescue, so we'll say sub 55 degree soil temperatures, Go ahead and apply apply one more to round out the year. Uh, oh man, it bounced down to the bottom here. Crazy lookout, what's up, man? How are you, good sir? Uh, boy, those mud mud buggies about ten pounds of it. What's the name of the lab? You get your soil samples done at. I don't have them done in the Knoxville area, but it's Waypoint Labs. Uh, also Midwest Midwest Labs, but Waypoint Analytics is usually. Uh, the go-to. Barry Cavanaugh says, have you ever used SolutCal for pH adjustment? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Barry Cavanaugh, typically if I'm having to do a pH adjustment, I'm using SolutCal. And the reason being is that it just works consistently quickly. In two months time frame, I know I've moved my pH at about a point, maybe 0.7 all the way to a point. Worst case scenario, I moved at half a point, half a point in two months time frame. Do that with a with a calcitic lime. Do that with a I mean with a with a dolomitic lime. You you just not saw you kill cow works wonderfully. We were actually just having this conversation. It has something to do with the way they formulate this. They called it a PAM P A M, which is a particular polymer. They grind that calcitic lime up into this ultra, ultra, ultra fine material. The finer the lime, the more effective it will be, the quicker it'll be. Uh, well, typically the more complete the reaction will take place and a little bit more uh, on, on your speed there. So they grind it up super fine and then reconstitute it back into a pill with organic acids, polycarboxylic acids, and also PAM, these polymers. And that will allow it when it releases them in the soil, it just woo, spreads it all apart and uh, will begin to react with all that hydrogen to begin to raise your pH. Parts of my reno came in a little thin in areas. Do you think I can throw down more seed before winter? Uh, what's the best way to go about getting on the yard with the soil being damp without damage? Unfortunately, there's not a great way to do that. Uh, if it's a little thin, how thin are we talking about? You got like four inches between seed germination or you got like two feet or a foot? Because if you got four inches, I would grow that in with fertilizer instead of trying to, you know, 
you know, chicken feed your seed in there. But worst case scenario, unfortunately, you're just going to walk on it. You can walk on it. It could be damp. It may knock it down. But, you know, even though they're seedlings, they're pretty rigid. They'll find their way back up to the light because if there's anything that is going to influence seedlings, it is light. They reach for it. They love it because they are trying to generate as many carbohydrates as possible. Gross burnt to it. Lawn companies decided to go with atrazine for this false treatment. They say it has good pre-emergent properties. Good idea or not? 22 Thunderbolt. Man, that is a great question, but there's a huge caveat on that. Huge caveat. What turf type? Are you talking about atrazine on centipede and St. Augustine right now, this fall? Or are you talking about Bermuda grass? Or are you talking about tall fescue? Um, or perennial ryegrass. You cannot apply atrazine on a cool season grass. I would not being a, I would not be applying atrazine on Bermuda grass either. Um, this time of year, you could get away with applying it to something like atri uh, like zoysia, which I wouldn't really be a huge fan of. But you can do it without really ill ill effects. Um, you could also do it on Centipede and St. Augustine with no ill effects. It does have decent pre-emergent properties, but no, they do not last very long. Triazine class herbicides are not known for their length of residual. In fact, typically when I'm using a triazine herbicide, I'm using it for its post-emergent property, not its pre-emergent property, even though they do have pre-emergent properties. Well, I'm treating my front yard to test weed treatments on back. Now my tall fescue in front is overrun with weeds. Hold on, held on treating my front yard to test weed treatments on the back. In front is overrun with especially thin areas. Advice for fall treatments here in SoCal to get on track. What is your, uh, okay, you got tall fescue. Um, typically, if you're dealing with weeds in the front now, I would say they're probably broadleaf weeds. I would look at something like a 2,4-D ester, or a three-way three ester or something like Momentum FX2 that contains triclopyr and fluoroxapyr. Those are going to be pretty good all-encompassing products to tackle the weeds you're dealing with this time of year. Are we talking about football or landscaping? Triple Eight Huskers, I will look into it. I don't know. Again, I would think I would think it would have more to do with using it in the same tank. So you don't want to take, uh, you know, like citric acid and mix it with humic 12 in the tank. You don't want to do that. You're going to make a giant mess. Um, as far as doing it after, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm going to have to rack my brain on it. Sub 420, what's up, man? How are you? Good, sir. Four speed XT, second application. Can I do another app at temps at 55 to 65 degrees? Waste your money or no? Uh, yeah, you can do uh, application at those temperatures. It will um, it will do just fine. Uh, just take two to three weeks, but it'll work. Dan with Permagreen sent me a free upgrade with the claws at the holes in the shaker. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Dan the man. Dan the man over there with Permagreen. He'll take care of you. You ain't got to worry about that. Uh, Andrew Green forgot to add. I did use triple 13 at rate one week before seeding. Uh, Andrew, I don't remember exactly what we've been talking about easier, but uh, yeah, you could do that. You, oh, I think you were asking about the phosphorus. Yeah, you could do that one week before seeding. It's good to go. It's a good time to put it down. Is it too late to put out a liquid detacher like Green County Detach for warm season turf? Lambert, yes, I would say it is. It's going to be way too cool to get the effect that you're looking for. I've been putting 92330 fertilizer. Is this a good idea this late in the season for new grass? For new grass, Sun 420, you'll be all right doing it. You're not going to hurt nothing. But I would stop doing that now and remove all that potassium and just focus on your nitrogen. Uh, putting it out up to now would be fine. Make that switch. Just straight nitrogen the rest of the year. Just throw out just straight nitrogen on your cool season grass. Cool season grasses. The long garden, what's going on, man? We were just talking about it earlier. We were asking about uh, the shirts, and I think uh, Alan Hayne got us up to speed there that at the end of the fundraiser, the, the shirts will be shipped to all those that support. And again, that's the long guardian. Check them out over in the YouTube search box. 
Lawn Guardian. Check out the video that was put together by Ryan Nor with a bunch of us in the lawn care community to take care of Rodney Smith. United We Mow campaign is what I'm talking about. If you can, throw some love. Show some love. Throw a couple dollar bills at him if you're doing if you're doing well in this world. You've got it to spare. Here's a warning I was talking about on PGCI Church website. Uh, warning, okay? It's a warning on a starter package. Okay, I can't see it. Uh, is Carbon X going to host Lawn Care Nut for Plant Tour? Of course, they can shake. Of course, we'll have them in there. Um, we're not going to have near the sophistication that they will, but we're going to have lots of different equipment in there, lots of different things than what you actually saw at their facility. So I think it'll be a nice contrast to what they're doing versus what we're doing. Uh, I sprayed Connor Ward in the show. Oh, 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 don't give me the dog. I'll, I'll, I'll howl at you. I will howl at you. I sprayed tenacity and atrazine on my goose grass. Well, atrazine worked too. Now I'm sitting in my lawn chair waiting for the bleaching. The goose is killing me. Also, will either of those attack my Kalinga? Uh, no, neither of them will attack your Kalinga. I don't know if atrazine will work on goose. It used to work decent on it, but I doubt it's got enough punch to take it out. Don't quote me on that. You're conducting as much of an experiment as I like to see. Check it out. See what it does. Report back. I'd be curious, but if I had to guess, I'd say nah. Speaking of lime, I need to come up about a point. Look at vertical. How often will I need to like to maintain? Probably a couple of times a year. Um, you may be able to get away with it just once a season, but it's not going to be a permanent fix. You would need to continuously reapply. Just keep that in mind. You're going to have to increase your frequency of testing until you find that sweet spot. Once you find that sweet spot, you should be good to go. Vertical is a similar product to Solucal. It is one of those polycarboxylic acid, uh, PAM blended products, plan, PAM infused products. So it will work very similarly. I was given some Mechamine D, Mechaprop. When and how would you? Would I use like your spots for a springtime or throughout the years needed? Hoosier. It is the same thing as a three-way herbicide. It's got 2,4-D mecha MCPA as an amine formula. When would you use it? You would use it when you're trying to kill your broadleaf weeds. Typically, that's going to be in the spring and in the fall. So I would use it probably around that time. I was about to buy some Humic 12 till I read that on Pete's website because I'm using sulfate soil amendments that are acidifiers in my battle against the chronic rain spot. I'll look into it, AAA. I will look into it, sir. Uh, total midnight bluegrass yard. How does your ear get it? Have an area that never gets sunlight. Only place in the entire yard that doesn't get any sunlight. Any suggestions? Um, yeah. Uh, you're Unfortunately, you're going to have to cut that tree down if you want your midnight bluegrass there. The only other option would be to... Yeah, nah, that, that's it. Maybe go with some perennial ryegrass in that area, but that's it's not a long-term solution. That's a Band-Aid on the situation. The, 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 the issue at hand is that it doesn't get any sunlight. There are really only uh, you know, three things a plant needs to survive. Number one, I'll say is water. And on that same plane as water is going to be Sunlight. Sunlight is incredibly important for the survival of grass. In the absence of light, grasses will not do well. So your solution would be to remove the tree. Connor War, you can give it the old hack and squirt. However, what I would probably do is I would pick up the phone. I would call a licensed professional with some badass insurance and have them come cut down my tree. That's just me personally. Uh, <laughs> DJ checking in from oh, first snow today and a good frost night. I think I've only got one mo left. Man, I hate it for you, brother. I hate it for you. Let me get on. Let me get on up here. Uh, appreciate that, Captain. No. Why is freight on pallets of granular so expensive to Oregon? Uh, the reason being, Andy, is that they 
limited down this length of time that they can spend in the truck at one time now. So a couple of different things that are being looked at on that. Uh, obviously, the cheapest thing to do would be able to be able to manufacture it somewhere on the West Coast. The second cheapest thing to do would be look at alternative forms of freight. For instance, rail. Rail is a little bit cheaper than uh, trucking it. So I don't know. We, there's there's some different things up there. Maybe if we find the right contract, might be able to find somebody with some cheap freight. Who knows? Atrazine on Southern turf types. I'm a spray tech, and I think my management is a bunch of jack wagons. I completely agree. Atrazine should not be used specifically as a preem. There you go. Uh, yeah, man. On brrr, you're in a tough, tough spot there, Thunderbolt. I don't know what to say. Use as a pre-emergent, you can do it, but is it going to give you season-long control in the in the winter time? No, it's not. But if it's part of, here's the other thing where I, I may say that they're they get they get the grass factor seal of approval if they're using atrazine as part of a an herbicide uh, resistance rotation program then they may be all out of options and they have to go with the triazine. So there you go. Really like clear screaming green except for the dust. Do you know a better alternative product without so much dust? AJ12271, I've got just the product for you. I am going to put a product in the, in, the, in the chat. Hop on over there, fill out the, the contact form, and they will contact you about – a product that is significantly less dusty, almost non-dust as compared to Screaming Green, and it is not five ingredients, six ingredients, seven ingredients blended in a bag. Homogenized. Time for the last first treatment. Lawn has gone from sandbox to look good for what it is. Weeds way down and finally seen some night crawlers. Still need semi-loaded dirt to help hold moisture. Woo! You know what else would help hold moisture? A high rate of carbon. KD Zeros is a great time if you're dealing with that much sand and you can't hold moisture. Throw out some biochar. You are the perfect candidate for it. Check it out. See what it does. Gravy, look out. That is a screw. This is the second time that's been asked. I'm going to come on up there to North Dakota and show it to you if you keep asking about it. Just kidding. For those of you who don't know, uh, Gravy and I are friends. We hang out in the Lawn Forum Discord. If you've never been to the lawnforum.com, I highly recommend you go and sign up. The lawnforum.com is a group of homeowners that are next level applicators, even for professionals. They do an exceptionally high quality job. And there I learn something every day I visit the lawnforum.com. Anybody who visits thelawnforum.com will learn something every day. Wonderful place to go. But if you want to hang out with the degenerates, you can hop over to the live chat we have going 247-365 on Discord. We have us a good time over there. So I can throw down 46 double O down on new grasses late in the season on tall fescue. Yes, you can, Sun 420. Watch your rate. You don't need to be putting down two pounds of in at one time, but you can put it down like a half. Oh, there's Connor Ward right there, like a half pound per thousand. There you go. Yep, that's right. Andrew Green planted turf type tall fescue after four weeks, top growth at two inches, but tips are wilted. I water twice a day, but temps drop 20 degrees. Your thoughts? Stop watering. Stop watering. Uh, the tips are probably wilting uh, because of the cooler weather and you're losing light and also. The amount of water that's going down. Stop that water. Once that grass gets up there, just shock it. Shock the fire out of it. Typically, I'll water like that for two weeks. And then after two weeks, I begin to stress the fire out of it. Stress it. Starve it. Let it get a little gray and wispy looking. Then give it a bunch of water. and Bring it back and then starve it again. Then give it some and let it come back out. And then starve it and come back out. Stress it. Let those natural hormones begin to kick in and do what they're going to do, Andrew Green. So I dial off the water. Pro Procaccini, Procaccini Productions. What's up, man? How are you? I'm uh, I'm getting out there, getting after it. 
Uh, let me get back up here. It's my house that is blocking the sunlight with regards to the midnight blue graph. Why won't let me cut it down? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell you there, man. You definitely can't take a chainsaw to the house. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you're going to have to look for something to do with that. Maybe everything that's being blocked significantly by the by the house in terms of light. Do something landscaping wise, maybe some rock features, maybe throw you in some Japanese maples, something just kind of spruce that that area. Up. Hey, I appreciate that, son. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Uh, that's it. <laughs> the house down. Doing a red fescue work as well. There you go. The quarter eight with 4600 just to make sure I don't get to watch out of the pores. There you go. You aren't making videos of daily lawn care anymore. You're busy with carbon X and having employees handle it. Yes, bird dog, that is the case. I am personally not treating yards anymore. Uh, carbon X has become very much a full time thing. It's not just carbon X. Uh, right now, we've got multiple different product lines we're working in it. Um, you know, we've got, uh, it is the fertilizer business carbon earth company is very, very complex because there are so many moving parts at one time. Um, and is even so with the, with the spray business is it's very complex too, because, you know, you're having to be at so many different places at so many different times and keeping track with all of that is a full-time job. Um, unfortunately, I cannot get away at this time from Carbon Earth to be able to do anything with the spray business. So people are having to handle that right now because there's not a way in the world that I could possibly do it. Uh, in terms of doing daily videos, once I get through the GIE, uh, I'll be able to do a lot more videos. But the GIE is our product launch. So all of the pressure has been building for this. So once we get through this, I'll be able to do a lot more. Part of that will be more videos. Um, my best customer moved to a new house this year and is taking out all big trees, huge pines and poplars. I was happy. <laughs> what are your thoughts on ammonium nitrate and nitrates for fertilizer compared to other forms of nitrogen? Tato! Okay, ammonium nitrate in particular, I'm not a giant fan of. and the reason being is that um, ammoniacal nitrates, so you're talking about two super quick release forms, have shown over time a decrease in turf quality. If you're going to go with a nitrate and you're looking for nitrate forms of nitrogen, you can do that, but look at products like cal nitrate, calcium nitrate, or potassium nitrate. That will give you a better result of what you're looking for. Calcium nitrate is going to be a great calcium source too. And with potassium nitrate, a great potassium source. If you don't believe me, ask Ray. Uh, I don't think Ray's on tonight, but Ray, Green Doc out in Hawaii, um, that, that is his primary K source, is K nitrate. Loves it. It's huge in the golf world. Golf courses use it often. You do not see a lot of people using ammonium nitrate anymore. And uh, especially in regards to turf, because of the amount of um, thinning that tends to take place. and if I was on a better night, I'd be able to find that study for you, but it was one of the studies that has been published. It's going to be 90 on Tuesday, and then down to the 40s a week later. Mother Nature, <laughs> yeah, it has. Any words on the growing trend, Milo, of necessary phosphorus application in recovering water sets? Chesapeake Bay representing. What on, Todd Holmes? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I think about it, and it's – First off, and you're not going to get a lot of the soluble phosphorus runoff that comes with a product like Milo because um, it's tied up in organic matter. So, you know, is Milo the, the reason we're running to, into issues in, in watersheds? No, it's not. Uh, Milo is kind of a, a kind of a fad right now. Um, and I, and I don't even want to use the word fad. I, you know, Ray uses the word meme. I, and and, and it's, it's really not. What it is, though, is that it's simple. It's kind of a set it and forget it type thing. It's a pressure cooker. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But phosphorus is something we all need to take seriously. And the reason being is that we do not need to draw 
any more attention to us than needs to be drawn to us. And, you know, you've got Monsanto and that trial going on that is just an absolute cluster as it is right now. And that all shines back on us unnecessarily. Same thing with phosphorus contributing to red tides. It shines back on us unreasonably. Un, un and here's the thing. Agriculture and all the bare soil out there in the world after uh, harvest contributes way more, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times more of phosphorus runoff than turf grass does. And the reason being is that turf grass is the greatest filter we have on earth. More so, turf grass is the greatest at sequestering atmospheric carbon dioxide. So from a two-point perspective, turf grass is going to be a greater contributor to cleaning up the environment than it would be polluting it. But part of that is our responsible use of fertilizers. I'm not a big uh, phosphorus supplier. And the, one of the main reasons is that we have plenty of phosphorus here in East Tennessee in our soils to get by. You don't need a lot. Again, I'm going to cite a PACE turf study with the MLSNs. And, you know, they're talking about phosphorus rates between 10 to 30 parts per million. I've seen it in lab settings. Uh, L93 bent grass being established at 10 parts per million of phosphorus with no discernible difference against 50 parts per million in phosphorus. Now, that wasn't straight from seed. That was a plug from plug. So it's, yeah. Once you have your grass going, phosphorus supplementation isn't as necessary. How about that? Uh, <laughs> long drive, I'm a degenerate. Oh, I'm a degenerate. Look at this. Okay, so we've got some updates here from the Long Guardian. The fundraiser ends on October 28th. Orders will be delivered about two weeks after the campaign closes. Hashtag United with Mo. I'll be wearing my shirt at the GIE one of the days, so stop by, see me, ask me about it. <laughs> hey, grass, spot me alone for the carbon. <laughs> uh, shoot me an email, Katie Zero. I'll, I'll give you a price. I'll let you know what it costs. Uh, we went nuclear this year with Spectacle Flow in the spring, 1200 per gallon, and now atrazine for fall. I'm now conceding, seeking, I, I, you know, is spectacle flow in the spring? Okay, here, here's here's what they may be thinking, Thunderbolt, is that if you go with a high rate of spectacle flow in the spring, that you may have enough residual carryover that you can use atrazine in the fall for pre-emergent, but also for post-emergent. So I'm not totally against it. I mean, it it's, uh, you know, it could, for a... For one of the years of trying to mix up herbicide usage and, and rotate products, I think that's fine. Did you ever update again on the Air 8 versus mechanical on your lawn? I did like three videos of it, and I'll tell you how it all played out. The Air 8 greened up significantly faster. It outgrew the mechanical aeration for about two weeks. Then I started hammering it with growth regulator, and it all evened out, and it all you know, it just looked like badass Bermuda grass the, the rest of summer. And still, even right now, as it cools off, um, you know, you, you saw the video there. Uh, you can see the line in the middle of seed heads in the video. But other than that, I mean, the yard looked great. There was one stripe of Pilex that went through uh, that was from emptying out a tank. So, you know, hey, there you go. There you go. Uh, but it did all right. They, they evened out in the end. Air 8 started out ahead, but then mechanical aeration eventually caught up to it, and it all, all looked the same. Uh, and that was with one application of Air 8. What's your thoughts on acorns left in the lawn for fall? Should they be raked up or just left in place and not disturb zoysia grass? I would try and get them up as much as possible, and the reason being is that it deposits a lot of organic material, a lot, and it's very woody, and it takes a long time for that break to break down. So what happens is, is you get pile on pile on pile on pile of acorns. And just as it starts to really start to break down, you get more fall on it. And just as that starts to break down, you get more fall on it. And you get this unnatural, like super high influx of microbe, microbial activity back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And 
oftentimes that it's having to work so hard to break that down. It begins to deplete nitrogen from the soil. So I would get them up as much as possible. Uh, what's the best turf type tall fescue cultivar to get online? You to kill weed and seed in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have no idea, Massey, what's available online. I know Pete uh, over at GCI Turf has his turf type tall fescue blend. I would start there because I know that's going to be a good thing to go. Oh, Horton GS. I know who that is. What's going on, Mr. Uh, that's, that's, uh, Mr. Gardner Horton? Uh, let's see here. My wife never comes in when I. <laughs> 12 inches of rain in the past 72 hours. Woo! Ryegrass is popping up like crazy while patients are winning turf type tall fescue. But the rain created a bunch of washout pass in my prep for the full reno. Got to fix? Uh, no, sir. You just got to repair it. Uh, when you're when you're dealing with washout like that, uh, you can get more seed down as quick as you can. Matt, thanks, man. Great what segue. The glyphosate PR problem for applicators. Uh, yeah, man, it is. It's, it's a nightmare. And what... What's kind of interesting how that all is playing out now is that it's likely going to go to trial again. So, um, you know, I don't care really one way or another the outcome of this. The What I do care about is the perception that gets transferred to the lawn care industry. The lawn care industry is going to unnecessarily take a giant brunt of attack because of the Monsanto trial, and it is not fair to us. How about that? Uh, is it too late to lay sod in Houston? Joan, I would, I would not lay it in transition. If you're in transition, if you're expecting a frost within the next 30 days, I would not lay it. If you're not expecting a frost within the next 30, 45 days, go ahead and lay it. Uh, let's see here. Hey, hop on in there, Triple H. I uh, hope to hear your answer on soil acidifiers and humic 12. Right now, what I'm going to say about that, Huskers, is it is not going to be an issue to apply humic 12 and soil acidifiers as long as they're done in separate applications. Because if humic 12 comes out of solution once it's applied to the soil, it's not an issue. However, if you mix them both in a tank, you're creating a recipe for disaster. Um, now, you can mix it with something like ammonium sulfate because the pH on that's going to be like a 5.5. That's not super acidic. But if you're going with something like elemental sulfur, citric acid, sulfuric acid, you're creating an issue for yourself. So that's going to be my, my statement on that. If you're using soil acidifiers, just don't use them in the same tank. Do them as two separate applications. Telly Coleman is late. He's been up there on that. Chopper, get to the chopper, Telly. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Sorry, man. Is that flat? <laughs> David Borden, there's David. He's our quality engineer. He's tuning in. Everybody showed David some love. David had to have uh, his knee surgery on. Uh, we will, man. We'll have a, a good trip. Hold the fort down and get plenty of rest, David. Uh, you don't need to be up there in Lenore City trying to hobble around the office and potentially falling down those bizarre hundred-year-old stairs we have going up there. You can't even walk two people in there. Well, I guess not with me because I'm ridiculously wide anyway. All right, everyone, it is 10.04. I am going to call it. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Thank you for tuning in. If you missed the links, check out the links. We got... Real low dad in the house. We've got hang on, hang on. I'm throwing links in the chat. If you if you haven't, check out the Carbon Earth Company. Facebook page. Everybody, everybody go go show some love to Real O Dad. Subscribe to him. He's a great guy. Michael's my neighbor. We have a good time together. Uh check out the Carbon Earth Facebook page. We'll be doing some great stuff going on at the GIE. We're gonna be doing pallets of fertilizer given away we got a couple different instances where that's happening too craziness uh i know if you are a member of the plca we are going to be giving away three pallets of fertilizer to three different companies what 
man, we got all kinds of good stuff coming up for the GA. And it's the only thing I'm going to tease right now. Telly Coleman, no, I can't get to the chopper. You'll be able to buy uh, some uh, Carbon X coming up really January 1st, maybe maybe the middle of December. We'll see how that, how that goes somewhere in that time frame. Uh, if you have it, check out everything that's going on the lawnforum.com. And if you have it, visit us over at the Discord if you're ready to get down. That's what we do over in the Discord. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. It's 10 o'clock. We're signing out. Everybody, enjoy your week. If you're going to the GAE, come see me, boo. 10 one at Green County Fertilizers Setup. All right, everyone. <laughs>